Welcome to the program, friend. We are going to play a little bit more of Donald Trump's press conference, the first one he did in almost six months. You're going to love this. Oh, and you're going to love seeing that SmackDown with CNN. I'll be right back. Welcome back, friend. I am so excited about the press conference that President-elect Trump did two days ago that I decided we were going to let you see as much of it as possible in its entirety. Most people do not have the privilege that we do of we, we do news and, and events for this show on a regular basis. This is what we do. So our staff, we got to sit here and watch the whole press conference. And I've been watching press conferences for my entire adult life, okay? And I've been in press conferences as the subject. You can go online and you can see, I don't even know how many pictures of me, yours truly, standing with a mountain of microphones in front of me. So I, I know what it's like to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the press. And I was watching Donald Trump and I felt like I was a professional boxer going, yeah, hit him there, yeah, hit him there, encouraging him as he went. The reason I want you to see this is because if you saw it on cable news, Fox, CNN, and MSNBC, then you could have seen the whole thing. But if you watch ABC, CBS, NBC, or if you watch the other news outlets that I just referred to, the cable news later on in the day, later on in the night, they're just picking the sound bites that they want to make Donald Trump look bad. And Donald Trump didn't look bad. He looked like the heavyweight champion of the world. So we're playing it for you, and I hope that it inspires you. <clears throat> Here it is. I'll, I'll talk to you at the end of the show. Many people voted for him precisely because of his business success. President-elect Trump wants to bring this success to all Americans. Thank you. My pleasure. Mr. Trump, can, you, Mr. Trump, can we ask you? Don't lose your notes. Thank you very much. Mr. Trump, can we ask you some policy questions? Policy questions, sir. Right. Good question. I, I really think that when you watch what's going on with what's happening and why I was just watching as an example, Rex Tillerson. Uh, I think it's brilliant what he's doing and what he's saying. Uh, I watched yesterday, as you know, our great senator who is going to be a great attorney general. And he was brilliant. And what people don't know is that he was a great prosecutor and uh, attorney general in Alabama. And he was brilliant yesterday. So I really think that uh, they are, I think we have one of the great cabinets ever put together. And we've been hearing that from so many people. People are so happy. You know, in the case of Rex, uh, he ran incredibly ExxonMobil. When there was a find, he would get it. When they needed something, he would be there. A friend of mine who's very, very substantial in the oil business, Harold Hamm, big supporter, he said, there's nobody in the business like Rex Tillerson. And that's what we want. That's what I want to bring to government. I want to bring the greatest people into government because we're way behind. We don't make good deals anymore. I say it all the time at speeches. We don't make good deals anymore. We make bad deals. Our trade deals are a disaster. We have hundreds of billions of dollars of losses on a yearly basis, hundreds of billions with China on trade and trade imbalance with Japan, with Mexico, with just about everybody. We don't make good deals anymore. So we need people that are smart. We need people that are successful. And they got successful because, generally speaking, they're smart. And that's what I put. I'm very proud of the cabinet. I think they're doing very well. It's uh, very interesting how it's going, but it's, uh, I think they're doing very, very well. Quick follow up, sir, on, on Russia, sir. I wanted to ask a few questions on Obamacare. Yeah. Can you be specific on what guidance you're giving congressional Republicans on the timeline for repeal and replace? Sure. Whether it needs to be simultaneous or... Finally, okay. Obamacare. I thought it was never going to be asked. I also wanted to ask you, though, if you have uh -oh. outlined a plan for what you want the replace package to look like. Would it guarantee coverage yeah. for those who have gotten health insurance through the current Obamacare law? You're going to be very, very proud as not only the media and reporters, you're going to be very proud of what we put forth having to do with health care. Obamacare is a complete and total disaster. They can say what they want. 
They can guide you any way they want to guide you. In some cases, they guide you incorrectly. In most cases, you realize what's happened. It's imploding as we sit. Some states have over a 100 percent increase. And 17, and I said this two years ago, 17 is going to be the bad year. It's going to be catastrophic. Frankly, we could sit back, and it was a thought from a political standpoint, but it wouldn't be fair to the people. We could sit back and wait and watch and criticize. And we could be a Chuck Schumer and sit back and criticize it. And people would come, they would come, begging to us, please, we have to do something about Obamacare. We don't want to own it. We don't want to own it politically. They own it right now. So the easiest thing would be to let it implode in 17. And believe me, we'd get pretty much whatever we wanted, but it would take a long time. We're going to be submitting as soon as our secretary is approved, almost simultaneously, shortly thereafter, a plan. It'll be repeal and replace. It will be essentially simultaneously. It will be various segments, you understand, but will most likely be on the same day or the same week, but probably the same day, could be the same hour. So we're going to do repeal and replace, very complicated stuff. And we're going to get a health bill passed. We're going to get health care taken care of in this country. You have deductibles that are so high that after people go broke paying their premiums, which are going through the roof, the health care can't even be used by them because the deductibles are so high. Obamacare is the Democrats' problem. We are going to take the problem off the shelves for them. We're doing them a tremendous service by doing it. We could sit back and let them hang with it. We are doing the Democrats a great service. So as soon as our secretary is approved and gets into the office, we'll be filing a plan. And it was actually pretty accurately reported today, the New York Times. Uh, and the plan will be repeal and replace Obamacare. We're going to have a health care that is far less expensive and far better. Okay. Well, if I can save jobs, for instance, I was doing individual companies, and people said, well, but that's only one company. Like, we did a good job with Carrier. And I want to thank United Technologies, which owns Carrier. But we saved close to 1,000 jobs. And they were gone. And Mike Pence and his staff really helped us a lot. But those were jobs. That was a tough one, because they announced a year and a half before that they were leaving. So it's always tough. When they're building a plant, it's a little tougher than before they start or before they make an announcement. So I want to thank United Technologies. But uh, we've uh, been meeting with a lot of companies. But what really is happening is the word is now out that when you want to move your plant to Mexico or some other place, and you want to fire all of your workers from Michigan and Ohio and all these places that I won for good reason, it's not going to happen that way anymore. You want to move your plant, and you think, as an example, you're going to build that plant in Mexico, and you're going to make your air conditioners or your cars or whatever you're making, and you're going to sell it through a what will be a very, very strong border, not a weak border like it is now. We don't even have a border. It's an open sieve. But you're going to sell through a very strong border. Not going to happen. You're going to pay a very large border tax. So if you want to move to another country, and if you want to fire all of our great American workers that got you there in the first place, you can move from Michigan to Tennessee and to North Carolina and South Carolina. You can move from South Carolina back to Michigan. You can do anywhere. You've got a lot of states at play, a lot of competition. So it's not like, oh, gee, I'm taking the competition. We've got a lot of places you can move. And I don't care as long as it's within the United States, the borders of the United States. There will be a major border tax on these companies that are leaving and getting away with murder. And if our politicians had what it takes, they would have done this years ago. And you'd have millions more workers right now in the United States that are 96 million 
really wanting a job and they can't get. You know that story, the real number. That's the real number. So that's the way it is. Okay, go ahead. On the fence. It's not a fence, it's a wall. You just misreported it. We're going to build a wall. I could wait about a year and a half until we finish our negotiations with Mexico, which will start immediately after we get to office, but I don't want to wait. Uh, Mike Pence is leading an effort to get final approvals through various agencies and through Congress for the wall to begin. I don't feel like waiting a year or a year and a half. We're going to start building. Mexico, in some form, and there are many different forms, will reimburse us, and they will reimburse us for the cost of the wall. That will happen. Whether it's a tax or whether it's a payment, probably less likely that it's a payment, but it will happen. So remember this, okay? I would say we are going to build a wall, and people would go crazy. I would then say, who's going to pay for the wall? And people would all scream out, 25, 30,000 people, because nobody's ever had crowds like Trump has had. You know that. You don't like to report that, but that's okay. Okay, now he agrees. Finally, he agrees. But I say, who's going to pay for the wall? And they will scream out, Mexico. Now, reports went out last week. Oh, Mexico's not going to pay for the wall because of a reimbursement. What's the difference? I want to get the wall started. I don't want to wait a year and a half until I make my deal with Mexico. So, and we probably will have a deal sooner than that. And by the way, Mexico has been so nice, so nice. I respect the government of Mexico. I respect the people of Mexico. I love the people of Mexico. I have many people from Mexico working for me. They're phenomenal people. The government of Mexico is terrific. I don't blame them for what's happened. I don't blame them for taking advantage of the United States. I wish our politicians were so smart. Mexico has taken advantage of the United States. I don't blame the representatives and various presidents, etc., of Mexico. What I say is we shouldn't have allowed that to happen. It's not going to happen anymore. So in order to get the wall started, Mexico will pay for the wall, but it'll be reimbursed, okay? Uh, Supreme Court judge. So, as you know, I have a list of 20. I've gone through them. We've met with numerous candidates. They're outstanding in every case. Uh, they were largely recommended and highly recommended by Federalist Society. Jim DeMint was also very much involved in his group, which is fantastic, and he's a fantastic guy. So between uh, Leo and Jim DeMint and some senators and some Congress people. We have a great group of people. Uh, I'll be making the decision on who we will put up for justice of the United States Supreme Court, a replacement for the great, great Justice Scalia. Uh, that will be probably within two weeks of the 20th. So within about two weeks, probably the second week, I consider the first day because we'll also be doing some uh, some pretty good signings. And I think what we'll do is we'll wait till Monday. That will be our really first business day as opposed to doing it on Friday because on Friday people are going to have a very good time at the inauguration. And then Saturday, as you know, we're having a big church service and lots of good things are happening. So our first day, and you'll all be invited to the signings, but we'll be doing some pretty good signings on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and then also the next week. And you're all invited. But on the Supreme Court, I'll be making that decision, and it'll be a decision which I very strongly believe in. I think it's one of the reasons I got elected. I think the people of this country did not want to see what was happening with the Supreme Court. So I think it was a very, very big decision as to why I was elected. Mr. 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 President, like, the tweet that you had this morning about are we living in Nazi Germany, what were you driving at there? What are you trying to tell them? I think it was uh, disgraceful, disgraceful, that the intelligence agencies allowed any information that turned out to be so false and fake out. I think it's a disgrace. And I say that, and I say that. And that's something that Nazi Germany would have done and did do. I think it's a disgrace. That information that was false and fake and never happened got released to the public. As far as BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage, writing it, I think they're going to suffer the consequences. They already are. And as far as CNN,
going out of their way to build it up. And by the way, we just found out I was coming down, Michael Cohn, I was being, Michael Cohn is a very talented lawyer, he's a good lawyer in my firm. It was just reported that it wasn't this Michael Cohn they were talking about. So all night long, it's Michael Cohn. I said, I want to see your passport. He brings his passport to my office. I say, hey, wait a minute, he didn't leave the country. He wasn't out of the country. They had Michael Cohn of the Trump Organization was in Prague. It turned out to be a different Michael Cohn. It's sure. a disgrace what took place. It's a disgrace. And I think they ought to apologize sure. to start with Michael Cohn. Sir, since you're attacking us, can you give us a question? Go since ahead. No, Mr. President-elect. Go, go ahead. President go ahead. Since you are attacking no, our news not you. organization, not you. can you give us a chance? Your organization you're, you're is terrible. You are attacking our news organization. Your organization you is terrible. Let's go. Ask a question, sir. Go ahead. Sir, Quiet, state, quiet. Mr. President-elect. Go ahead, she's, she's asking a question, Mr. don't be rude. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be You're rude. Us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. You, sta can you, you are fake news. Sir, Go ahead. can you state categorically that nobody... No, Mr. President-elect, that's not Go appropriate. Ahead. President Obama went too far with the sanctions he put on Russia after the hacking. I don't say he went too far. No. Will you roll them back? No. What do you think? I don't say. Plans to send you a bill for tougher ones. Plans to send me a bill for what? For tougher uh, I hadn't heard Lindsey Graham was going to do that. Lindsey Graham. <laughs> I've been competing with him for a long time, and he's going to crack that one percent barrier one day. I didn't realize Lindsey Graham's still at it. It's all right. I think Lindsey Graham's a nice guy, actually. I've heard that he's a nice guy, and I've, I've been hearing it. I've been hearing it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I don't recommend reforms. I recommend uh, people that are uh, that have some moral compass. Uh, you know, I've been hearing more and more about a thing called fake news, and they're talking about people that go and say all sorts of things. But I will tell you, some of the media outlets that I deal with are fake news, more so than anybody. I could name them, but I won't bother. But you have few sitting right in front of us. Uh, so they're very, very dishonest people. But uh, I think it's just something we're going to have to live with. I guess the advantage I have is that I can speak back. When it happens to somebody that doesn't have this, doesn't have that kind of a megaphone, they can't speak back. It's a very sad thing. I've seen people destroyed. I've seen people absolutely destroyed. And I think it's very unfair. So all I can ask for is honest reporters, yes. Intelligence agencies are vital and very, very important. We are going to be putting in, as you know, Mr. Pompeo and others. You know the senator, Dan Coats. We're going to be putting in some outstanding people. Within 90 days, they're going to be coming back to me with a major report on hacking. I want them to cover this situation. I also want them, however, to cover maybe most importantly, because we're hacked by everybody. You know, the United States, our government, out of a list of 17 in terms of industries, is the worst. It's number 17 in terms of protection. If you look at the retail industry, if you look at the banking industry, various industries, out of 17 industries, they put this in the category of an industry, the United States is last in terms of protecting let's say, hacking defense. Like, we had a great hacking defense at the Republican National Committee. That's why we weren't hacked. By the way, we were told they were trying to hack us, but they weren't able to hack. And I think I get some credit, because I told Reince, and Reince did a phenomenal job, but I said, I want strong hacking defense. The Democratic National Committee didn't do that. Maybe that's why the country runs so badly that way. But I will tell you, wait, 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 let me finish. Within 90 days, we will be coming up with a major report on hacking defense. How do we stop this new phenomena, fairly new phenomena? Because the United States is hacked by everybody. That includes Russia and China and everybody. Everybody. Okay. Well, I think it's pretty sad when intelligence reports get leaked out to the press. I think it's pretty sad. First of all, it's illegal. You know, these are, these are classified and certified meetings and reports. And I'll tell you what does happen. I have many meetings with intelligence, and every time I meet, 
people are reading about it. Somebody's leaking it out. So then I said, maybe it's my office. Maybe my office, because I have a lot of people, a lot of great people. Maybe it's them. And what I did is I said, I won't tell anybody. I'm going to have a meeting, and I won't tell anybody about my meeting with intelligence. And what happened is I had my meeting. Nobody knew, not even Rona, my <laughs> executive assistant for years. She didn't know. I didn't tell her. Nobody knew. The meeting was had. The meeting was over. They left. And immediately, the word got out that I had a meeting. So I don't want that. I don't want that. It's very unfair to the country. It's very unfair to our country what's happened. That report should have never, first of all, it shouldn't have been printed because it's not worth the paper it's written on. And I thank the New York Times for saying that. I thank a lot of different people for saying that. But I will tell you, that should never, ever happen. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. Can you stand here today, once and for all, and say that no one connected to you or your campaign had any contact with Russia leading up to or during the presidential campaign? And if you indeed do believe that Russia was behind the hacking, what is your message to Vladimir Putin right now? He shouldn't be doing it. He won't be doing it. Russia will have much greater respect for our country when I'm leading it than when other people have led it. You will see that. Russia will respect our country more. He shouldn't have done it. I don't believe he'll be doing it more. Now, we have to work something out, but it's not just Russia. Take a look at what's happened. You don't report it the same way. 22 million accounts were hacked in this country by China. And that's because we have no defense. That's because we're run by people that don't know what they're doing. Russia will have far greater respect for our country when I'm leading it. And I believe, and I hope, maybe it won't happen, it's possible, but I won't be given a little reset button like Hillary. Here, press this piece of plastic. Guy looked at her like, what is she doing? There's no reset button. We're either gonna get along or we're not. I hope we get along, but if we don't, that's possible too. But Russia and other countries, and other countries, including China, which has taken total advantage of us economically, totally advantage of us in the South China Sea by building their massive fortress, total. Russia, China, Japan, Mexico, all countries will respect us far more, far more than they do under past administrations. I, I want to thank everybody. So this is all, just so you understand, these papers, because I'm not sure that was explained properly, but these papers are all just a piece of the many, many companies that are being put into trust to be run by my two sons. And I hope at the end of eight years, I'll come back and I'll say, oh, you did a good job. Otherwise, if they do a bad job, I'll say, you're fired. Sir, Goodbye, everybody. You did not answer, Goodbye. Sir, you did not all right, friend, I, uh, I hope that you are glad that we did this for your sake. We, we do this program to promote the truth and justice and of God's word. And I, I leave you with this, as excited as I am for what Donald Trump did in that press conference. And I'm thankful that he talked about the Supreme Court judges. Um, friends, we've got to stop the shedding of innocent blood. We've got to stop the murder of babies by abortion. Mr. Trump's election was a reprieve. All right, so that we didn't keep plummeting down the, the, the path towards the jaws of hell being led by the likes of Obama and Hillary. But remember, George W. Bush, George the Younger, he was president. The Republicans had the House and the Senate. They didn't defund Planned Parenthood. You understand? They didn't make it a crime to kill an unborn baby. So if we get the finances right, the wall right, jobs right, trade with China right, killing ISIS right. We get it all right, but we don't stop the shedding of innocent blood and, re and restore marriage to the sacrament, to the covenant, the holy institution made by God himself, then we're not going to survive as a nation. God has allotted his disposal and reality is what he says it is. So let's cheer for Mr. Trump, but I'm committed with this program to telling the truth as best I can as I see it through the grid of biblical ethics and biblical law. 
And I ask you to pray for us at that end. And I ask you to duplicate that effort in your own community. All right? God bless you. I got to run. Have a great weekend.